On today's show, the auto industry is running ahead of schedule in reducing greenhouse gases. Renault sets its sights on a $7,000 electric car for China. And Ford does some fancy stuff with headlights. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Every year for the last four years, the U.S. EPA tightened up standards for greenhouse gas emissions. And every year, the auto industry has beat that standard. Last year, automakers had to meet a standard of 270 grams of greenhouse gases for every mile traveled. On average, they came in seven grams below that. The EPA says that's an impressive achievement, especially considering that truck sales are going up while passenger car sales are dropping. But not everyone beat the standard. Kia, Mercedes, and FCA all missed the target. But almost all automakers, including those three, have carry-forward credits, so they will not be fined. Here's my AutoLine insight. The EPA likes to praise automakers for beating the standard. That's part of its public relations push for the midterm review to keep those standards in place. But automakers are worried that those standards get much stricter from 2019 through 2025. So while they're beating the standard today, they're using the midterm review to argue they're going to need relief in future years. With a bigger focus on safety around the world, more and more vehicles are being equipped with driver assist technologies, and Ford is working on expanding what it offers. One technology that caught our eye is called advanced front lighting. It uses an onboard camera to detect roundabouts, as well as stop signs and yield signs. Once the vehicle reaches an intersection, the field of light adapts to what it sees. The light pattern is spread out in a wider pattern, but doesn't project as far out in front. As the vehicle turns, the inside headlight will illuminate the driving direction, while the other will light up the opposite way. In other words, if you're making a right turn, the right headlight will shine right, while the left points left. Ford expects advanced front lighting to come out within the next few years. Still to come, Renault wants to sell $7,000 EVs in China. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. The number of electric cars on the road is up six-fold since 2014. That's leading some to predict that in the next decade, EVs will cause another oil glut. But the International Energy Agency isn't buying it. It says that the growth in oil consumption is being driven by commercial trucks, airlines, and the petrochemical industry. The IEA says electric cars will not cause oil consumption to go down, at least not in the foreseeable future. Speaking of electric cars, China's micro EV market is booming, and now Renault may be looking to hop on the bandwagon. CEO Carlos Goen says the company wants to sell EVs in China that only cost $7,000 to $8,000, and it wants to hit that price tag without any incentives or subsidies. We wonder if Renault is thinking about offering some form of the Twizy maybe with a fully enclosed body. That would have the potential to be a real sales boom for the company. In China's Shandong province alone, 800,000 of these small, low-speed electrics were sold through August, compared to 245,000 regular EVs sold in all of China in the same time frame. As we've reported, Volkswagen's diesel scandal could cost the company upwards of $70 billion. And in order to figure out how to cover those costs, Reuters reports that the supervisory board is holding an extraordinary meeting tomorrow to discuss a wide-ranging restructuring of the company. The head of VW, Herbert Diaz, is seeking $4.1 billion in cost cuts from its workers by 2021. However, its Works Council, which makes up nearly half of that board, will not agree to any cuts without production and investment commitments from management. The sources tell Reuters that Audi and Porsche 
are going to be under heavy pressure to cut costs as well. There's a battle going on over connectivity standards in China, and we'll have more about that right after this. At Bridgestone, our engineers want to help make sure you're not stuck on the side of the road. Our revolutionary drive guard tires are engineered to take a puncture and drive up to 50 miles. Ready to go. Watch the Olympic Archer demo at BridgestoneTire.com. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Connected cars could represent the biggest advance in automotive safety since the three-point seat belt. But there's a battle going on in China over which connectivity standards to use. Bloomberg reports that General Motors wants China to use the wireless communication standards already developed in the United States and Europe. That's based on DSRC, or Dedicated Short Range Communication. But China's more interested in 5G, or what they call LTE5. That's because several Chinese companies have developed that technology. China wants to have fully autonomous cars to make up 10% of its market by 2030, but General Motors says it's going to be difficult to hit that goal since LTE 5 technology is not fully developed. GM says that if China adopts the same standard as the U.S. and Europe, it will provide massive economies of scale that will bring prices down dramatically. Hey, before we go, don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours today. Our special guest is none other than Bob Lutz. No doubt he'll want to bring us up to speed with his latest car project, the Destino. But we're also going to be asking him about what he sees going on in the automotive industry. Everything from autonomous cars to which car companies he thinks are doing the best job in the industry. And we welcome your questions too. Send them to viewer mail at Autoline.tv. And then tune in when we go live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time at Autoline.tv. Hey, with that, we wrap up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.